Oh look, the Coleman's. What's up, Glenn Coleman? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Talk we're about obstacles. We're gonna pivot and keep going. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Right. Um. So yeah. So the Doctor Sears method. I'm gonna look into that. I've actually. I don't know if you ever heard of Doctor Ridlin. Have you ever heard of Doctor Ridlin? Mm -hmm. So he's this holistic pediatrician that I found um, and he talked about the whole spacing it out and kind of like um, boosting their immune system prior to getting them. Um, if that's the route that you choose. And I actually talk about that in the ebook. I mentioned like no vaccines and getting vaccines. And if you, so some parents are on the fence or they're just unsure. So it's like, a, it's like the lesser of two, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's good. I'm glad you guys like, really educated yourselves prior to going into all of this mm -hmm. um i commend that you got y'all just i love it okay um so the last uh baby wyatt mm -hmm. um can let's get into how that became about like was it a schedule c section or it was okay. and now okay one moment <laughs> when i get off the phone i'll help you okay okay deal are you gonna cook the yeah. Yes. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um. Now looking back, knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I wish I had advocated for myself. Um, because I don't think the C-section was necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why do you say that? Because I think they could have offered to try to turn him manually. Um, oh, he was. Yeah. Yeah, he he wasn't exactly breach, but trans he was he was like horizontal, yeah. basically like sideways. Yes. Oh, he yes. was transverse. Trans okay, transverse. That's it. Um, yeah. and he would not he wouldn't move. Um, how many weeks were you? Do not share it. You went full term. You mean how many weeks was that when I gave birth? Yes. Um, like was that third? 39 or 30, 38, 39? Yeah. 38, 39, something like that. Um, okay. But aside from him being breached, was there anything else going on that they would have needed to They were also you to? concerned about his size. Um, oh, okay. he was getting Because <laughs> Ian, my son prior, was, big. was very big like his head and his shoulder <laughs> so they had to use those like jaws of life thing to like pull the forceps, the forceps. yeah they had to use the forceps okay. to pull him out um and why it was even bigger than Ian. each child is progressively bigger yeah okay so those were the two like main concerns yeah he was getting really okay. big and and they were concerned that he wasn't gonna turn yeah. because he was big Okay. And Amanda has a small frame, so it's like the history of like knowing the push. <laughs> knowing the push. It's the face you just made at you. But I mean, I feel like everybody has a small frame. No, I'm saying that's in, what they were saying. In comparison to a baby coming out yeah. of there, you know? Okay. That's what I was looking so at. there's this concept that they've been um, oh, yeah, very so big on lately, and I've noticed it's called a big baby. Oh. Um, this big baby thing, right? So they, they say, okay, in proportion to the mom's pelvis, the baby is so big, they don't think that the mom can deliver vaginally. Mm -hmm. And this is based on, and, um, you know, when they size the baby based on, like, 
a bunch of other babies. Like they take a series of measurements from other babies yeah. to say, okay, this baby's big or this baby's small. That is an estimate. Um, and I am saying this, and I don't want, want it to come from a place of shoulda, woulda, coulda, yeah. you know, because at the end of the day, baby's here, baby's safe. Just for, just for their knowledge and for you guys' for knowledge, knowledge for future their pregnancy. Knowledge, we done. Right. You, you guys are done? You, you never know. Right. You, you never, never know. know. See? Okay. That's a conversation. Okay. Okay. Um, but so <laughs> a huge part of what I do um, pushes moms to be able to trust themselves, right? Because mm -hmm. in the medical field, I've noticed that a lot of times they – that distrust forms like from the beginning they say they you know they start hitting you with little things to make you feel like you're incapable your body's not right. capable of doing things so telling me that my body that that created the child mm -hmm. carried the child mm -hmm. now is not able to deliver the child it kind of like it shifts my mind because mm -hmm. now i'm just like oh okay I'm not capable and then we're going to start an induction process and then i'm already having my doubts and then it's like yeah those those the, your thoughts start to spiral and you start to think negatively and it's just like a it's like a revolving like a domino effect yeah. like i said so understanding that um that's one thing that i like always touch on just trusting your body knowing what you're capable of now this breach thing and that's another popular thing that if you're breach your automatic c-section how open to you or how open are you if you ever do have kids, to potentially do a vaginal breach. Do you know that they deliver vaginal breach babies? I did not know that. Yes. See, a lot of moms don't know. Mm. a lot Because what we're shown in, in society is that if it's breach, it's a C-section automatically. Um, and I follow this page. And if you've had one C-section, you all to. your other births have to be C-section. Yeah, that's another myth. Mm -hmm. That's not true. That's not true. Um, and I, I will say that this generation is definitely shifting away from that and becoming more aware that that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do, you just know that you don't have to have another C-section right. again. <laughs> okay. There's this page that I follow though that I'm gonna share with you guys. It's called Breach Without Borders. I've actually partnered with them to bring a workshop to Miami. I'm super excited because I've been following Hi. them for a while now. Um, so they go around teaching uh, physicians, midwives, students, whoever wants to learn how to uh, breach, deliver vaginal breech babies. And then they, they teach like the different positions that they might be in. And they kind of like, the reason why they don't deliver breech one, it's a liability, right? <clears throat> it's, a, it's a liability in a hospital setting. Um, obstetricians are the most sued doctors in mm -hmm. the country. Um, and they're not trained in it. Yeah. So basically when they say, I'm not delivering a breech baby, they're also saying, I'm not trained to deliver a breech baby. Right. So I don't feel comfortable and I'm not going to do yeah. it. That's exactly what they're saying. Mm. So for any mom who's listening, your breech, you feel like, okay, I'm, just uh, get a second opinion if you aren't comfortable. But if a C-section works for you, then be my guest. That's another thing. I don't force you guys to yeah. go whatever route I feel comfortable with. It's about what you feel comfortable mm. with. Um, Okay, but thank you for sharing your birth experiences with me. Awesome. I look forward to more if there is more. Um, <laughs> but we can get into, uh, where's the rest of the question? Sorry. Oh, uh, you said, <laughs> what were y'all's fears going into parenthood from both perspectives? Oh, <laughs> man, I feel like I had so many because, first of all, we got pregnant six months after we got married so okay that was the, there was the whole i thought i had more time mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. um so there was that and just feeling like i was not prepared but not knowing that no matter when we had kids i was never going to be prepared yeah. because mm -hmm. it's just it's just a whole it changes that you learn in the field everything. You learn in the field. That's what we say. Exactly. In the exactly. You learn in the field. Do you yeah. want to go into like the, I guess the, your previous experiences or what led us up to like, even getting a child, you know, like the, talking, the struggle. You're talking in code. I am talking. Go, do you just, want to talk about like what happened in your childhood or not? In Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was a, I, so yeah. I had sexual trauma yeah. as a as a child okay um 
so yeah being being an adult who was molested as a child mm -hmm. like that also brought a certain amount of like just anxiety around um like my body and mm -hmm. and everything um so yeah and that definitely i'm glad you said that because that definitely impacted um like the birth and even like getting checked mm -hmm. was kind of like triggering, yeah, somebody, right. triggering yeah. for me um and but i feel like giving birth actually brought some healing mm -hmm. for me in that area um mm -hmm. because i felt like something something good came from yeah. you know um me engaging in sexual activity with someone like it, it wasn't this bad all bad thing anymore mm -hmm. so um that was really healing and i think my my midwife and my doula were very they were very uh cognizant and sensitive to that versus the ob that i had at first mm -hmm. you know there was no discuss there was no discussion of that at all so oh my gosh <laughs> yes so yeah um wait 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 pause you said there was no discussion of it when when it came to the ob yeah like that my yeah my sexual trauma and abuse that didn't come up until i started being cared for by the ob i mean by the doula and the midwife mm -hmm. like and they they basically gave me a questionnaire like from the beginning and they were mm -hmm. asking me about that like have you experienced that you know because they wanted to know what they could do to like support me yeah like do you and, want vaginal exams like that yeah sort of stuff. Like, like and i was like wait i was like wait a minute like they care about that like what yeah mm -hmm. um so yeah that was yeah that was priceless yeah uh, wow thank you for sharing that and, and finding strength in sharing that yeah. i appreciate that because I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's a few moms or like you know women out there who <clears throat> either watch these videos or or are going to come across this who have endured the same thing and even in my practice i've had a few women who have dealt with that so i commend you again. you're such a, a strong and beautiful person i see i see i see um so from from my dad's perspective were you, you feel like you were prepared for me? Um, no. fatherhood or you were scared? Heck no. Um, I think, like, one, like, being, uh, like, that expectation of like, how am I going to provide, right? How am I going to father? Um, and knowing that, like, my parents did the best that they could, but didn't necessarily have, like, all the tools or all the skills needed, you know what I'm saying, to transfer that information. Um, they transferred the best that they had. You know what I mean? So it kind of definitely felt like we were in a, on an island in a sense. You know, like we were just going to figure it out. God was going to guide us and how to make it happen um, and how to care for the child. And we didn't, with Ava, we didn't know what we were having. So we, we opted. To, <gasps> it was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. So when she came and I lifted the leg and saw, she didn't believe that it was a girl. Yeah, she had her mind said, made up it was a boy. When he said it was a girl, I was like, nah, you're lying. She's like, why would I lie? Like, why would I lie? Right now? <laughs> I was all like crying. I was like, the baby's here. Like, why would I lie about you? Um, and then there's just a certain kind of like, I don't know, as soon as she got here, oh, like, so, like, peace that just overcame me. I was just like, you know what? Mm -hmm. You may not have all the answers, but like, God has inspired y'all to care for this thing. Like, we're we're going to figure it out some way, somehow. You know? Absolutely. Yes. That's how you're figuring it out. Right? No, there's a couple more. Oh. 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 Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Hi, Mama. Hi. She's like, I'm not feeling any of that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Look, they're looking at you. Hi. Did you say hi? No, it's no. all right. Okay. That's all right. We're not saying quiet works. Quiet works.
Um, okay. Where are we on the... Uh, let's question. see, you said, what's the biggest challenge for you guys? And then you put mentally. Mm. I think just having time to actually think <laughs> and, like, and like pause because yeah. you know, we, we homeschool, so <gasps> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, so you know, Jonathan works from home, mm -hmm. so we're we're all home together doing our things during the day, and yeah. that is intense. It ne okay. it yeah. never stops. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so mentally, like just having a moment to think, to breathe, like yeah. it's very challenging. So what do you do? Get up. How do you take a moment? Well, yes, we get up before <laughs> they get up. So I'm up at five, and yeah. like I pray, okay. I read, like I spend time with the Lord. I have to do that. Yeah. Um, and routines, like I juice every morning, like that helps me. And quiet time. Quiet time is from one to, to three, three every, every day. day. <laughs> so if you want to go to sleep, great. But you're going to be in your room reading the book, not bothering me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like that. Y'all yeah. teaching me something. I'm going to have to have y'all back on to talk about this whole homeschool yeah. thing. Because I actually, I actually have another friend, and that's her right there saying, yes, yeah, she homeschools as well. Yeah. Okay. And I'm looking into getting to that. So yeah. we will definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That. yes. Okay, wow. Okay, Jonathan, what about you? What is it the same? Yeah, it's the same thing, but I don't have the same discipline that she has to get up at five. Um, you okay. know, I be getting up six thirty, seven, seven thirty, something like that. I have to clock in at seven thirty. <laughs> so I you know, I make sure that I do that. But um yeah, I think the biggest thing is just finding time and for me it's like sometimes it's just alternative ways to get some alone time. So whether it's uh, you know, going to the grocery store to go run and get the groceries by myself or just taking one of the kids instead of all three of the kids to the store mm -hmm. with me. Um, sometimes that gives me enough of a mental break, you know, from the day to day and then being cognizant of it when she needs it too. you know what I'm saying? So we're not, I mean, we're not perfect at it, but we are definitely aware and try. You have a system that works for you guys. Ish. Yeah. Ish. Right. <laughs> it could be you guys problem. make time for each other outside of being parents? Yeah, so that was yeah. your next question. So, yes. help, so what helps us is having something to look forward to. Yes. So like, okay. it's like, okay, yes, it's crazy right now, but we've got a date night scheduled for Wednesday. So yeah. we're going to get a break. You know, like, Making sure that <laughs> that those things are consistent, mm -hmm. that we have, you know, some time mm -hmm. yeah. together that's like, that we have to look forward to. Yeah. And time just uh, like alone away from the house too. So it's like, for instance, if I know I have a certain block of time or if my day, my work day looks different, right? One day, maybe it's heavier on the front end and lighter on the back end Then I know on the back mm -hmm. end. I'll watch the kids so she can go like sit at the coffee shop or something, right? Like, so she can get her mental break. And she does the same thing for me. Like, if she knows that my work schedule has been real tight and, you know, the kids have been like on a thousand, right? And then she sees it on my face. She's like, you know what? I think you need to go like, take go, a nap. go take a nap, right? Like power naps have been a blessing, right? Like take a power nap or, you know, or just take a full on like slumber right mm -hmm. um or just get out the house right just get out the house we have a you know a local coffee shop that's like 10 minutes away um that's not like a chain it's like a mom and pop start um coffee house so just sitting there and just you know just kind of not seeing little people for a little <laughs> <laughs> like seeing other adults and just yeah. kind of mm -hmm. or seeing nobody because sometimes the coffee shop is empty so um just being aware i think the biggest tip or suggestion that i could give for single parents or, you know, married couples that are doing this is just one, have enough self-awareness, right? Like have yeah. enough awareness to say, okay, am I functioning optimally? And then having the same level of awareness to say, what is it that really like gives me rest and recharges? Cause those are two separate things, right? Like, cause rest Absolutely. is one thing, cause you definitely need rest. Uh, but there's also things that re-energize you so that, that way you can put that back out right mm -hmm. so those those things look different right for me it's it's really odd but folding clothes My like, <laughs> like okay or 
if I'm stressed out, I'm cleaning. I'm, I'm physically moving stuff because tangibly moving things re-energize me. So, mm -hmm. uh, but she's not aware of those things. She's like, yes, yeah, she want to eat. <laughs> or pacify. Is it? Is it? Is she still eating, or is it like really just kind of like the? So it's uh, she eats, but it's really like for comfort. Yeah. It's not. Ava, Ava yeah. went for how long? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Yeah, my son, I had to cut him at three years. He definitely would still be on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if he, yeah. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, Ava would still definitely be Well, oh, not yeah. at five. I don't know at five. No, not at five. But we would, if we didn't cut her off at two years, she would have definitely gone. Because it was three. almost three. She would have definitely gone three. Yeah, she would have definitely gone three. Are you still breastfeeding Wyatt? Mm -mm. Or did you breastfeed Wyatt? No, I did. I did. Um, a little bit. A little bit. He did more of pump milk. Yeah. Because okay. he had a um a tongue, yeah, a tongue, tongue tie. tie. All three of them had a tongue tie. Um, but his oh, wow. his was the worst. Thing. Was the worst, and it took us longer to get his clip. So we mm -hmm. lost a lot of our time to be able to practice. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he. he Did you ever see or feel yourself getting touched out? Hmm. And like, do you, do you know what what it means to be touched out? Uh -uh. So touched out or like a sensory overload is um okay one moment Tommy it happens when um like moms breastfeed or even even moms who don't breastfeed just being tugged on and pulled on from your kids all day mm -hmm. it can kind of create like this like um stress response and it kind of pushes you away from your partner or not wanting to be touched by anyone even like it comes to your partner too mm -hmm. so um I think so. you think I experienced that in the first two. Uh, with Ava, it was it was like breastfeeding for her. Amanda was like at that season of her life, she was definitely like a perfectionist, right? Like she felt like, oh, I gave I gave this natural birth, I did this, and it's like this baby should latch. Why isn't the baby latching? You know, and we went to like the, okay, the lactation specialist and everything. We got the the tongue tie fixed, and we went and got her latched, and then the latching was like literally like destroying her her breasts right like because mm -hmm. it was like it just is what it is right it's the nature of it yes. um and then i remember her being like just so overwhelmed with like i can't get this right and i'm like dude just pump like it's the same thing like you know they're getting what they need it's not the same yeah, look she getting what she need she's she got what she need right that's one thing okay and then two it's like especially with ava she was always on us, right? Like she was always on, like skin to skin, all day, every day. Not just, not just the first couple of years. It was like years, right? She's still the one. She's still the one that will come and like, you know, be all the like, I want to love. It's just her, right? So it's like it's not like she wasn't getting the love. It's not like she wasn't getting all the other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I I definitely felt with her, it was very much so. Uh, not like don't touch me, but. I didn't even want to bother her because it's like whenever she got to kind of close her eyes and just rest, I was like, thank God she's resting. Mm -hmm. Like, let her just, I would like mute no! anything. Like, I would even move her from the couch. She could like stay on the couch, stay asleep, or, to sleep there. So, it's the bonding experience with the child with the coast of breast. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I mean, from her perspective, I don't know. I guess I never breastfed. No, you didn't. <laughs> What, you um, die? You die? Did you? No, don't die, okay? Did you do skin to skin? Like, from well, as a dad? All of them, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's still kind of like a bonding. That's a bonding experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was dope. Yeah. Yeah, we did it all, all the kids. What is it called? Kangarooing or whatever? Kangarooing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whatever it's called. Yes. Um, okay. Where are we on my question list? I think Sorry, I should be doing Girl, this. You, you, I think, I think I think was... Yeah, you asked, do we make time for each other outside of parenthood? Yep, how important that is. So we, we try to schedule monthly date nights um, as best we can. Mm -hmm. um, and then now that Ava's a little older, we also do, like, I do daddy-daughter dates with her once a month, too. So just kind of, like, mm -hmm. stressing the importance of it and having her see her value um, so no other joker comes into her life trying to give her her value. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I I tell my friends and um, everyone that I try to emphasize making time for each child mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because they still want them to feel, yep. you know, that they have their attention or that it's not just always about 
yeah. all the other kids right. and, and them. Mm -hmm. Any tips for other parents, whether they're married or single? I think you, the, aware, the awareness. The awareness piece. Yeah, that was. Yeah, and I think something that's real big that's right now, like we're both in therapy and that's a blessing. So if y'all could get into some therapy, yes. like get it. Um, we got free therapy, so praise God. I that. love it. My job offered uh, six free sessions a piece for the year, and then we get another free six one, like another free six sessions starting January first. So I encourage you in that. Um, but one of the things that was highlighted in my session uh, recently was, you know, like your upbringing is not your child's upbringing, right? So your child's upbringing mm -hmm. is unique to your child, right? So allowing children to just be children, you know, I think. Um, I don't know if you were raised the same way, but we were raised in the sense that, you know, like they say in Spanish, if the adults are speaking, the children stay quiet, right? So it's like, or if the adults are here, the children are over there, and there's no, it almost creates a, a sense of like children have no value or worth or their opinion doesn't matter. Oh, no, yeah. no voice. No like voice. We had, I had no voice. Yeah. Like, I was, just, I was raised by my grandmother. Yeah. I didn't have much of a voice either. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's just allowing kids the, the freedom to be children, one. Creating boundaries, like teaching them boundaries, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But, you know, having them have that okay. awareness to just be kids, you know? Kids. Um, yeah. And our, our experiences don't have to be their experiences, you know? I would, yeah. I would Absolutely. Say that. Absolutely. I actually just posted a video the other day how I was talking about how kids have boundaries and we need to respect them, like if they say, don't touch me or yeah. leave me alone or... I know we may take it as like, oh, like, are you being disrespectful? But like, no, they're not. It's not, they say, they don't think in their heads, how can I be disrespectful? Right. Yeah. To this? They're just operating in, in, in the limited capacity that they have. I mean, it's not limited, but in a sense, it's like, they don't have the understanding and the word power that we have exactly. to say, I don't feel like being touched right now. Or like, you know, I just need some personal space. And it's so funny because they, they learn, they're sponges. Mm -hmm. I say I need personal space. I say I need a minute. My son now says that to me all the time. So I have to respect it because I want that respect. Right. Yeah. When I say it. So I, I love that so much. I love that. Uh, last thing is, I appreciate you guys. Doing last thing that. Is how, people, how can people support us or where they can follow us? Um, real cool. Uh, we are marriage camp culture on ig and i think on facebook as well mm -hmm. right we're yeah. marriage camp culture um so for i know some people have kind of jumped in late but what we do is um we really just feel called to help cultivate healthy marriages um and create a community where people can be transparent just like the same community that marissa is building um you know with just education information and encouraging, flat out just support and encouragement right yeah so um so we do that on our platform um, but we also host virtual date nights. The next one we got coming up is January 15th, 15th right? So oh, virtual yes. date night is January 15th. Uh, we'll be doing a cooking Mommy demo, so I love to cook. Um, so we, we send out, like, couples register on our link. Um, is this only for married couples or, like, married and engaged? Married and engaged, yeah. Married and engaged, yeah. okay. Or if you like dating and you're really serious, we, we, can, open, <laughs> we can open that up, you know? Okay. Um, we can open That's that so cute. But yeah, it's it's for married couples. Um, and and basically, it's just a date night for them to spend some time together, um, and share share in community with other like minded people, right? And mm -hmm. other other married couples. Um, last time we had couples from uh, Alaska, South Florida, Texas, Louisiana join. That's super from, cute. Yeah, from all over the United the flyer for that so I can promote that. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so that's January 15th that's coming up. Um, we're going to be doing, like I said, a cooking demo. It takes about an hour, hour and some change. Um, and we do something similar. You know, we just kind of pray. We laugh a lot. We do like a little bit of an icebreaker while we're cooking so people can kind of get to know each other. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, man, we all eat together for a few minutes and just kind of share, share our experiences. Um, so we're trying to do that. We do it virtually and we're hopefully we'll be able to do one in person next year. Yes. Um, and then offer offer a platform for people to just kind of be just how you know mm -hmm. how you're offering that platform you know mm -hmm. uh, for for your for your niche right we're just trying to offer that yeah, same for platform you guys for for our niche so um, so yeah man just follow us and uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us on one of our sessions.
Okay, I'll make sure that I tag them on this uh, video so that you guys can follow them right away. Awesome. I mean, I think it's so beautiful knowing that you guys' background is in College Summit and, like, the things that I learned that kind of, like, propelled me toward all of the things that I know and the... the... It's so beautiful. You guys are such beautiful people. Oh, are you? Beautiful so people. are you. You guys are changing the generation. And then just, it makes my heart warm knowing that your kids are going to have that same foundation. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. They're the future leaders of the world. Yes. So thank you guys for everything that you do. Yes, thank you. And we're going to speak life with you right now. All right, so are you ready? Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. Be ready. Because it's like, dude, like you're resilient. It's all get out. You know what I'm saying? And I know that I, know that I struggle and we struggle with pausing Mommy. and really kind of like sitting in that, right? Because we don't mm -hmm. give ourselves permission or time to do it because we have little people to watch after and then we have to try to take care of ourselves yep. and re-energize so we could just wake up the next day and do it, and all, do it all over again. again right so it's like right. i really i pray that at some point in this evening like as these words are spoken and maybe even as you hear the playback like you really just sit in like how god has blessed you and it's like i know that things have not been easy um i'm not gonna dive into it but you know that i know right and it's like i know that the path hasn't been like just one that's been paved a lot of times it's one that you're sitting there and kind of like chopping down the trees and laying down the foundation yourself. Mm. Um, but just know that you're not alone, right? Like the, the same drive that you have to create this community for other people, it, it comes from that space of not having it for yourself, right? And Absolutely. it's like now you're creating that opportunity. So I really believe that as, as you're pushing that out, like people are going to be pushing into you and supporting you and encouraging you in that. So just don't forget, like don't forget I know there's some nights that you cry and you're by yourself, right? Trying to see how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I know that like God has definitely has his hand on you and over your life. And it's like covering you to ensure that this stuff that is, is that's coming out does come out because yeah. uh, it needs to, it needs to. And it's, it's going to help a lot of people. Like I said, I think it's going to help empower a lot of people. I think it's going to help like liberate a lot of people. Um, and you know, it's, it's not going to be in vain that your journey and the things that you're going through is like definitely fills its purpose. So know that you're loved and that, you know, we got your back and we're praying for you and we're rooting for you. Um, and we, we want to see you succeed in this. So we very much so love. You. Thank you, guys. That means that mean, really means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. Um, even to you guys taking the time out of your night. Um, but thank you. Thank you. I'm learning to accept my flowers. So I really yeah. appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I, I look forward to having you guys back on yeah. so we can discuss cool. homeschooling. For sure. Um, For sure. Because I know that's probably something else a lot of people want to talk about, oh, too. Yeah. Especially with, like, everything that's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, guys. No um, you have a good night. Too. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Have All a good right. night. Enjoy your me time before you guys go to bed. All right. <laughs>